Comment Yvan J'ai eu la chance de rencontrer un grand monsieur dernièrement. Vous ne le connaissez pas forcément, mais il a un impact sur une variable que vous suivez assidûment quand vous regardez la F1. Vous devinez pas Mais si, c'est un truc qui peut faire littéralement basculer un Grand Prix. Les pneus Et oui, j'ai été au Grand Prix de Barcelone avec Pirelli. Et là-bas, j'ai pu rencontrer le boss du motorsport chez eux. C'est lui qui prend les décisions concernant les pneus en F1. Donc on parle d'un monsieur qui pèse. On a fait cette interview dans le motorhome Pirelli dans le paddock. Une belle immersion pour moi, je vous le garantis. Alors ne soyez pas surpris, cet échange est en anglais. Mon invité étant italien, c'était notre meilleur moyen de communication. Cette vidéo, bien évidemment, elle est sous-titrée. Et les sous-titres sont inclus dans la vidéo, donc vous n'avez rien à faire. Cet échange est aussi plus court que d'habitude. Comme vous pouvez l'imaginer, le boss du motorsport chez Pirelli sur un week-end de Grand Prix, il est très occupé. Je vous garantis néanmoins que vous allez en apprendre sur les pneus, les choix de composantes, la raison de la présence de Pirelli à F1. Je vous en dis pas plus. Cette interview est aussi disponible en podcast sur toutes les plateformes d'écoute. Passez mettre 5 étoiles si ça vous plaît, merci beaucoup. Si ce contenu te plaît, abonne-toi, mets-moi un petit pouce bleu et profite de la vidéo. Mesdames et messieurs, Mario Isola. Hi Mario. Hello. Thanks for being here today. It's a pleasure. I know you're very busy on Grand Prix weekends. As a starter, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Mario Isola, I'm motorsport director for Pirelli, and uh, I work in motorsport since more than 20 years now. It's your place then here on Grand Prix weekends, right? Yeah, that, that's my second home. Yeah, I bet. But I probably spend more time here than at home. <laughs> Mario, Pirelli has been in uh, committed to F1 for more than 10 years. Yep. Um, why F1 in the first place? And how would you explain this longevity? Uh, why F1? Uh, because F1 is, uh, is the pinnacle of motorsport, is the pinnacle of technology and being involved in Formula 1 means develop technology and also to, uh, to create value for the brand, to bring the brand around the world. It's a very well-known sport uh, uh, everywhere in the, in the five continents and it's probably the only championship with this uh, kind of uh, diffusion. So we're happy to be here. Why so long time? Uh, obviously, we invested a lot in, in uh, Formula One and in motorsport in general. And uh, to be part of the show, to be part of the sport, uh, you need to invest on a long term. Mm. Uh, there are processes for the renewal of the contract, obviously. And uh, we are happy that we had the opportunity to stay in Formula One for such a long time. Because, uh, as I said, we had the opportunity to develop uh, a lot of new solutions that are also useful for uh, road cars now. Mm. So um, F1 brings you exposure, of course. Yeah. Uh, what does Pirelli bring to F1? I believe we are a good partner. We are not just a sponsor. We are a technical partner. Uh, since the beginning, we uh, try to follow any new proposal, any new idea uh, coming from Formula One. We started with high degradation tires, then We had a new power unit, uh, hybrid power unit, putting a lot of more weight and torque on the tires. Then Formula One decided in 2017 to change to wider tire and finally to 18 inches. Every year we have to uh, upgrade our product depending on the request mm. from Formula One. And this is on the technical side. It's not just Formula One, but also the super series like Formula Two and Formula uh, Three that are uh, racing together with Formula One. The other point is about our activation. We are very active in marketing uh, um, activities. Uh, we created together with Formula One the Hot Labs. That is a very nice program to give uh, our guests and guests from Formula One and car manufacturers the opportunity to run uh, with a professional driver on a, a road car, on a supercar, on track at the same time, not at the same time as a Formula One driver, obviously, but in the same weekend, look okay. at the same track. Mm. So they have the opportunity to understand the, the real performance of our P0 product. Uh, we have been part of the Formula One exhibition. We are part of the Formula One exhibition. Uh, we activated uh, a lot of other ideas in the past, uh, and we are still talking to Formula One for new ideas for the future. So I believe we are a good partner, uh, 360 degrees, not just on the te technical side. Yeah, you're also involved in the fan experience. And Absolutely. Yeah. Fans are really important for the sport and uh, uh, we are happy to push on this uh, direction mm. to give them better experiences, the opportunity to to feel the real uh, taste of Formula One. Some Sometime in the past, I remember there were a lot of uh, 
criticism about uh, Formula One being too far away from uh, spectators. Now I believe that with uh, social media, marketing activities, promotions, paddock club, uh, mm. and other uh, kind of uh, experiences, uh, we are able to take spectators in the real heart of Formula One. You talked uh, about road yes, as well. Um, so how do you convert uh, the learnings and the data you take from F1 and how do you apply it to to uh, all the road activities? There are a lot of areas that where we develop technology for uh, road tires. Uh, uh, don't think about the tread compound because obviously that mm. is designed for this uh, specific application. We are required to uh, produce compounds that last for a few kilometers to increase the show, to have more pit stops. But uh, for example, we started developing a virtual model of the tire. Yeah. Thanks to Formula One cars, they are they are mobile laboratories. Basically, they have a lot of sensors and we get all telemetry data from the cars. So with this telemetry data, we can fine tune uh, our vir virtual tire. And when you have the technology in the company to make this uh, virtual model, then you can do the same for uh, uh, GT tires, uh, uh, road car tires, any other product in the company. Okay. That's probably the most relevant uh, uh, application because thanks to this and thanks to the simulator that now we have in uh, Milan, in Bilocca, mm -hmm. we have been able to cut the number of prototypes uh, that we built before validating the product uh, and also the time for development. We develop new materials, we have developed new production processes, we have developed new indoor testing in order to simulate what happened on track. So there are many areas that, mm. uh, where we can uh, learn and then transfer technology to road tires. You use F1 as a laboratory, right? Yeah, we use F1 as a laboratory, uh, laboratory. not just F1. Clearly, we have uh, F2 and F3, F3 yeah. uh, GT, Rally. Rally, for example, is really important for uh, gravel, uh, ice and snow surfaces where obviously Formula One is not uh, mm. racing. And thanks to this uh, extended activity in motorsport, uh, we can uh, use a lot of uh, learning from motorsport into technology for road tires. Um, how challenging is it to evolve in such a uh, risky environment, in, in such an extreme environment for uh, a brand like Pirelli? Yeah, the, the point that you touch is, is really important because uh, when you are the sole supplier, you are always exposed to criticism. I mean, the winner is the winner because he's a good driver. All the rest are just complaining <laughs> about something and uh, and sometimes tires. Uh, so you are always under pressure, even if uh, you're not under the pressure to, to supply a tire with uh, high level of performance. These tires are high level of performance, but not extreme uh, because obviously we are the sole supplier mm -hmm. but you are requested to make a tire with uh, a very good consistency um, the integrity is not under discussion the, um, we have to follow some uh, um, parameters that are defined by all the stakeholders uh, in order to make a tire with the characteristics uh, agreed mm -hmm. Uh, in the past, we had a uh, discussion with the uh, team's drivers and um, FIA and F1 because they were asking for a different product, but we make only one product that, that, that has yeah. the, mm -hmm. the best compromise for everybody. So in 2015, we decided to write a document that is the target letter listing the targets mm -hmm. that are requested to the tires, and we focus to reach those targets that are agreed. So you, as tire supplier, are always under pressure. All our engineers have a lot of requests from teams uh, every day. Mm -hmm. If they learn how to use the tires, uh, they have an advantage. Yeah. So uh, if they are quicker than competitors to learn how to use the tire, they, yeah. they take home uh, a performance advantage. Mm -hmm. That's why there is so much stress. Uh. Talking about that, um, this weekend we're in Barcelona. Um, yesterday, on Friday, then um, the teams were gi were given testing tires. Yes. Um, what do you plan with? Uh, what do you plan to change with these tires? The reason why we decided to ask to a, the FAA for the introduction of a new product from Silverstone is that, uh, as I said, we receive telemetry data from the teams, yeah. but uh, we also receive 
simulations from the teams on the expected performance at the end of the year. Okay. So last year in June and December, we got simulations with their idea of the expected performance at the end of the season. Okay. This is because we have to homologate a product that we shouldn't change for one year, mm -hmm. but they develop the cars. Yeah. After Melbourne, we realized that uh, the level of performance reached by the car, by the teams in three races was yeah. already what they were supposed to reach at the end of the season. Okay. The, the development was much quicker than expected. And that's why we, we, we have in our uh, portfolio a new material that is not changing the characteristic of the tire, the behavior, the balance, the performance are the same, but uh, the resistance to integrity is much higher. Okay. And so we have basically two options. One is uh, to increase the pressure in order to protect the tire. The other one is uh, to introduce a new material or to change the construction. And after a discussion with the FIA, uh, we believe that the best way to go now is to introduce the new material. So you have to adapt quickly. Yes, <laughs> you have to adapt quickly. And the reason why we supply the prototype tires here in Barcelona yeah. is because uh, all the teams uh, had the opportunity yesterday to test the new prototype to learn about the new construction, but basically to learn that the new construction is not making any difference to mm -hmm. the old one other than yeah, okay. the integrity, mm -hmm. the, the level. In terms of the yeah. mm -hmm. and, uh, and now they have good information for Silverstone. About the, the new rain tire that was, yes. I think, tested in Monaco, right? There, there's a few cars that uh, tried it, I yes. think, during the race. You, are you happy so far? Super happy. Yeah. Because we found a new compound, uh, it's, it's a, new, a new idea uh, that we tested several times during winter. Because you know that Formula One has this uh, plan to uh, increase the level of sustainability yeah. of the championship for the future. So any action that is in the direction of reducing the environmental yeah. impact uh, is uh, more than welcome. We are looking for uh, removing the blankets for the future. So we started to test a, a wet compound able to work without blankets. We found a new compound uh, with uh, a warm-up that is even better than the old one with blankets, mm -hmm. also in cold condition. Level of performance is much better, and this is good because we have a, a better crossover with the intermediate tire. Mm -hmm. So after, uh, I don't remember, if four or five sessions, all uh, the, uh, the, the drivers said this is a, a massive step up in performance, okay. uh, yeah. drivability and everything. We agreed with the teams uh, to introduce that from Imola. Unfortunately, yeah. Imola didn't happen, but uh, they, they used uh, in, uh, in Monaco. And uh, we had uh, some, la Monaco is quite unique. So yeah. have, uh, to take the data from Monaco with uh, paying, paying a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had part of the uh, race, some laps where mm -hmm. uh, Red Bull on the intermediate tire was lapping at the same time of us uh, on the f uh, extreme wet. Okay. So I believe this is a good indication yeah. that the full wet tire was working properly yeah. with the uh, correct level of performance. Maybe more data this weekend. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Looking at the, the screen there is quite great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and clouds are coming. <laughs> On the same note, um, you'll be trying to reduce um, the uh, number, the amount of tires that uh, teams will be given yep. in, in Hungary, right? Uh, yeah, it was supposed to be yeah. Imola yeah. Is in Hungary, and uh, we are talking to the FIA in order to identify a second race. Okay. Uh, there is this new idea. The new yeah. idea is that um, at the moment uh, they have uh, 13 sets of slick per car, yeah. but they use a lot of tire only for qualifying, and that's why all the teams are keeping a good number of sets in the soft compound for qualifying. Mm -hmm. But, and the, the sets for quality are connected with the sets for the race. Uh, if we find a way uh, to reduce the number of sets they use in quality or to have a different approach, mm. we can reduce the number of sets without any impact on strategies uh, or the show or uh, other elements. Uh, and this idea to run Q1 with the hard compound, Q2 with the, so uh, with the medium compound, and Q3 with the soft compound, uh, mm -hmm. it's good because with these six sets, uh, mm. then uh, they go to race uh, yeah. uh, with a good uh, 
breakdown of compounds so any any strategy is possible what happened now is that uh, they have to sacrifice qualifying is if they want to keep in yeah. their allocation uh, more than one set of hard or one set of medium mm. or if they give priority to qualifying during the race they don't have enough sets of uh, hard you know uh, the softs are like a qualifying tire now because they, they are a qualifying tire yeah. yes absolutely yeah. okay yeah. and if they have for the race uh, i don't know four sets of soft or five sets of soft they are useless by the way how, how do you uh, choose the compounds before every weekend we consider the uh, track layout yeah. and the severity yeah. of the layout uh, we have data on uh, thermal roughness uh, mm. and then obviously we have an, uh, an idea of the weather condition expected this is why uh, with all these parameters and uh, if we go on circuits where we have uh, data coming from the past uh, we are able to select the three compounds we want to to take to the race that's actually a question that comes very uh, very often you know um moving on to um to uh, the future uh Pirelli's contract ends in 2024 yep uh how do you see the future i hope we can continue mm -hmm. we applied for a new three years contract i believe we have a, a good journey in front of us together with uh, formula one fia and the teams we have a very good uh, relationship with everybody and uh so there is a tender process and obviously we probably have also competitors we will we will bring our uh our plus <laughs> mm -hmm. then i hope we we are selected again one last question for yep. today um how would you define the define the perfect tire <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i'm not sure there is a perfect tire yeah. because it depends on uh how you want to to use it maybe in the future but in the future I mean, yeah. <laughs> in many years we will have a tire that is able to adapt to any condition and it's probably the perfect tire but at the moment and with the performance of the cars that we have not just in formula one but also if you consider super cars that are running on the road the level of performance is quite high so sometime you need to change the tire in order to to have the right tire for that condition i refer for example to summer tires and winter mm -hmm. tires uh you have a, a four season tire but uh, it's a compromise between the two so maybe in uh, i don't know how many years we will have a, a perfect tires working in any condition <laughs> let's wish that yeah. um it was very nice ch chatting with you thank you very thank much. you so much thank you thank you